I'm uh, Brian Kirshner, the bassoon professor at Central Connecticut State University. I also teach uh, theory and composition and related courses here. I'm here today to talk to you about the two uh, region etudes that you'll be preparing for auditions coming up uh, in November and for the most part. Uh, the pieces that they've chosen this year are two classical period, actually one classical period etude with two portions. Uh, the first uh, portion is marked Largo. It's in three, four time. Uh, it has uh, a couple of repeats in it, which they would like you to take. And the way that the piece is written, it also has then a second half, which is what they call a double. Uh, and a double is just a variation technique that was used in the classical period whereby uh, the first music that you played is repeated with ornamentation. And in the case of this piece, uh, which is fairly typical of these, the ornamentation is in faster rhythm. So whereas you're playing eighth notes in the first portion, you're playing sixteenth notes in the second. Um, now, I have to say, uh, I didn't choose these etudes, they're, they're, they're challenging. And uh, you're going to find when you play these that uh, the repeats are the most difficult part. And the repeats cause some other problems, specifically breathing, uh, mostly breathing and fatigue, I would say. They want you to go straight through these when they play them. When I just did the recording for you, I took the first repeat, but not the others. Uh, just be advised that whether I think it's appropriate or not, you're going to be asked probably to take them all. So uh, be aware of that. I want to practice for endurance. Um, the tempo that you choose, it does say Largo. Um, if you go too slowly with this, you will probably never make it through. Uh, there's a, a tough decision to make because your technique will become a question in the faster one. So you have to take a tempo that is fast enough for you to get through everything, but not so fast that the 16th becomes impossible in the second portion. So choose your tempo carefully. Fortunately, there is no metronome marking on this. So uh, it's really up to you, whatever you think Largo is. The double technically should be at the same uh, beat speed because it's the same piece with the ornamentation. <coughs> Breathing. Uh, you have to plan and choreograph where you're going to breathe in these things. Uh, I, uh, fortunately, in the first one, there are rests which allow you time to do it. Now, you may notice when you listen to the, the little performance I did of it here that I exhaled and then inhaled at the first opportunity for a breath. This is a critical thing. If you take too many inhalations without ever getting rid of the bad air, uh, you're going to hyperventilate eventually and start to feel uncomfortable. So you have to find places in bassoon and oboe playing to get rid of the air before you try to take new air in. Uh, I usually mark it with a little upside down V for the exhalation and a correct side up V for the inhalation. And then I remember to do both uh, when I'm performing. I then breathed in the first portion of the thing uh, before the second double bar after the first beat. So you play that B flat quarter note right before the last repeat sign. You breathe there and then continue all the way through to the end. Now this is, some people may think, well I should breathe after the double bar. Well, those four eighth notes go with the next phrase, so I would breathe uh, prior to it. Uh, you could do either, but that would be my suggestion. As far as breathing in the second one, I do the, roughly the same thing. I do exhale, inhale at the double bar. Then I'm going to go through the second uh, third of the piece. It's in three parts. And when I get to the, again, the measure before the second double bar, I will breathe prior to the last three sixteenth notes. And then I'm going to include those in the next section or the repeat if you take the repeat of the one you just did. Those are the places where I would breathe. Now, I get through them in one breath uh, pretty much uh, with those uh, breaths that I've told you. Uh, when you're younger, sometimes people need to breathe more often. If you do, I would simply do it. Uh, these etudes were chosen um, and they're, they're kind of difficult from a breathing standpoint. One thing is for sure, you can't play a wind instrument without wind. So breathe when you feel that you, you need to. They, you, they'd rather hear you sound good. The articulation that I use when I play these is uh, to lengthen slightly the first note of each bar uh, in order to kind of mark the, the important structural notes of the piece. Uh, the rest of it I play really as marked. There are no dynamics in this music at all. So you're not, uh, it's not incumbent upon you to add any. Uh, there are also just the written articulations. You should not change those. One little tip on playing one and three articulations. 
try to put a little bit of weight on the first note of the three slurred notes in each group so that you're playing it'll help to solidify the time and actually make the music more compelling. Um, dynamics I've spoken of and the phrasing I've covered. Let me just tell you a little bit about what the judges look to hear when you play these things. Uh, let me first say, before you even think about going in there, make sure you have a read that's working. Uh, wherever you get them, whether you get them from a mail order person or your teacher makes them, you need to have about three of them that are possible to use and on that day pick the one that's working the best. Soak it up in a little warm tap water for about a minute, warm it up nicely and, and you're ready to go. Uh, your bassoon of course also needs to work and be sealed. That's you know an important thing although it's be a little late to get that done now but I hope that you all have working instruments. What are the judges looking for? Well, we're looking for a good resonant sound. We want the sound to be big and full and with good air speed and well executed. If it doesn't sound good, the speed, nothing else matters. Second thing, even technique and thus very good rhythm. I would practice this with a metronome in order to keep your fingers straight. <coughs> I would probably suggest on the 16th note portion of it, to set your metronome clicking eighth notes. That way it's going to catch you every two sixteenths. Uh, and practice it under tempo, breathing where you need to, and then gradually you'll get comfortable with it. The muscle memory will build in and the tempo will become more or less irrelevant. You'll be able to do it whatever speed you want. They'll also be looking for good intonation. Uh, and to that end, I would suggest to you to use real fingerings. Don't use cheap fingerings. Don't use some uh, fingering just to get by in the passage, but work it in with the correct fingering. For example, when you play E flat on the bassoon, you should play it with one and three, the whisper key, and one and the B flat key, or two and the B flat key. Don't use any sort of other fingering just to get you by. There are a lot of E flats in this music, so you want to make sure you do that. Other than that, the main thing is to relax before you go in. I would suggest to you to try the old uh, routine of taking three deep inhalations and letting them out very slowly. I would take in the breath through my nose for about eight counts, slow counts, and expel it at the same eight count speed. Do that three times and it will help to reset your respiration and keep you from being uh, unstable with your breathing. I wish you all good luck and I hope this is of some help to you in preparing these etudes.